interesting facts about famous people. Accuracy in Western TV shows. Finding a good Western TV show is somewhat subjective. There are many series, such as Rawhide, that bring together Western tropes, established characters, and themes that entertain viewers and provide authenticity. Other series like Wild Wild West, no one would say is accurate, but does push the envelope, integrating innovative storylines to elaborate an adventurous plot and characters. Classic Western series like Bonanza, Rifleman, and more recently Deadwood, have created and maintained a loyal following. These shows about frontier life are popular, but does not mean they provide a realistic depiction of their subject. Today we will take a look at how accurate these Western series are, and where they may fall short. If you enjoy this video, hit the notification button to get my new videos. If you want to check out my many other videos, head over to my channel. The link is in the description. Let's get into it in no particular order. That they've never stunk. I got the shelf thing. The Rifleman. What Rifleman gets right. For five seasons, The Rifleman focused on Lucas McCain, Chuck Connors, as US Civil War veteran, widower, and rancher in North Fork, New Mexico Territory. The show was groundbreaking in its presentation of a single parent family, with McCain raising his son, Mark, on his own. What Rifleman Gets Wrong Revolutionary in its presentation of a single father, the Rifleman fell short in its main concept, the rifle at the centre of the show, named for the Winchester Model 1892, brandished by McCain. The tool wasn't designed for over a decade after the show was said to take place. Actors, Chuck Connors, Johnny Crawford, Paul Fix. Premiered September 30, 1958. Does that look like I'm spooked, Mr. Beaumont? Gunsmoke. What Gunsmoke gets right. The television series Gunsmoke ran from 1955 to 1975, starred James Arness as Marshal Mac Dillon, the lawman tasked with keeping order in Dodge City. Gunsmoke wasn't an idyllic presentation of the Wild West. Rather, it presented hardships in the American frontier, like cattle rustling, land and resource rights, and threats of physical harm. Gunsmoke usually depicted the lives of underrepresented stereotype groups, a deliberate decision by writer John Meston. The series was, according to Meston, the first show that treated Indians as humans, not just redskins. We made numerous shows about that, intermarriage and, of course, the buffalo. Gunsmoke also often leaving viewers with a not-so-happy ending. What Gunsmoke Gets Wrong Gunsmoke offered a grittier American West. It also made some errors when it came to history. Gunsmoke presented Marshal Dillon, the show's protagonist, as a U.S. Marshal, which wouldn't have been possible if he was based in one location. Marshals served whole states, indicating Dillon would have had to be a deputy marshal, if part of the marshal service at all. Actors James Arness, Dennis Weaver, Milburn Stone, Amanda Blake, Ken Curtis. Premiered September 10, 1955. Rawhide. What Rawhide gets right. Rawhide propelled Clint Eastwood into stardom, running from 1959 to 1965, mostly character driven, focusing on the lives and adventures of trail drivers on the western frontier, namely Gil Favor, played by Eric Fleming, and Rowdy Yates, Eastwood. Authentic in its depiction of the trials of moving cattle, seeking water, bandits, weather, and sickness, with Fleming, who was, in the words of the writer Ellen Thorpe, a strong portrayal of an honest, strong, intelligent hero, with a sense of justice and morality which overrode all others. Rawhide was dark, with storylines about addiction, crime, and ghost towns, all bringing an eeriness to the show. What Rawhide gets wrong? Toward the end of its time, Rawhide lost sight of its atmospheric representation of the West giving in to cliches and stunts to garner ratings. When Eric Fleming left the show in 1964, Rawhide declined further. At its best, Rawhide was an example of what the medium could achieve. As a glaring mistake, viewers noticed that Favor was wearing Wrangler jeans on the show, pants that were not at all appropriate in the 1860s. 
Actors, Clint Eastwood, John Ireland, Charles Gray, Eric Fleming, Raymond St. Jacques. Premiered January 9, 1959. Lonesome Dove. What Lonesome Dove Gets Right. Based on the characters created by Larry McMurtry's novel of the same name, Lonesome Dove stuck close to McMurtry's work, paying attention to the details he meticulously put forward. Lonesome Dove went to great efforts to preserve historical accuracy, opting to use Mexican Corrientes cows when longhorn cattle weren't available, the closest animals to the type of cows present on the frontier at the time. The costumes worn in Lonesome Dove were chosen to reflect the time. Disappointing writer turned extra Stephen Harrington when he was issued a derby hat rather than a Stetson. Derby hats, also known as bowlers, were, in fact, the most popular hat of the time period. What Lonesome Dove gets wrong. Despite all efforts not to give in to rose-coloured notions of the Wild West, even Larry McMurtry acknowledged that while he thought he had written about a harsh time and some pretty harsh people, he produced something nearer to an idealisation instead of a poor man's inferno filled with faithlessness and betrayal. He said, I actually delivered a kind of gone with the wind of the West a turnabout I'll be mulling over for a long, long time. The visual presentations of Lonesome Dove were, perhaps, more guilty of over-dramatisation than the novels. The miniseries gave into clichés, caricatures and tried and tried conventions. Actors Robert Duvall, Tommy Lee Jones, Diane Lane, Robert Urich, Frederick Forrest. Premiered February 5, 1989. The High Chaparral. What High Chaparral Gets Right. Running from 1967 to 1971, starring Leif Erikson as Big John Cannon. The High Chaparral cast Apache Nation members as Apache characters and Latinos as Latinos as a conscious effort to accurately show life in the American Southwest from the outset. The High Chaparral presents the dangers of living on the American frontier when Cannon's wife, Anna Lee, is killed by an Apache tribe. Cannon takes a new wife, Victoria, the daughter of a Mexican rancher, played by Argentinian-American actress Linda Crystal and her father, Don Sebastian Montoya, portrayed by Frank Silvera, born in Jamaica in 1914. The High Chaparral incorporated ethnic diversity into its plot and its cast alike, featuring Henry Darrow as Victoria's brother, Manolito, Darrow of Puerto Rican heritage. The High Chaparral used real people not as lovable as those at the Ponderosa from Bonanza, but were easier to respect as anyone who prefers people to icons. What High Chaparral Gets Wrong The High Chaparral creator, David Dortort, was dedicated to providing historical accuracy in his show, but the show only lasted four seasons. Praised for depicting the beauty, authenticity and diversity of the American Southwest, the High Chaparral showed less violence and less realism by its last season. The show also lost some of its major cast during its final season, namely Mark Slade, which turned fans against the show. Actors, Leif Erikson, Cameron Mitchell, Henry Darrow, premiered 1967. Hell on Wheels. What Hell on Wheels got right, running for five seasons, told the story of Cullen Bohannon, Anson Mount, a former Confederate soldier turned railroad man in the American West. As Hell on Wheels presents the challenges and opportunities of westward expansion, the show has extremely realistic depictions of the type of camps people lived and worked in on the frontier, incorporating historical detail and imagery of Samuel Bowles, a 19th century journalist who travelled the Great West, supposedly coining the term Hell on Wheels to describe the life on settlements along the expanding transcontinental railroad. What Hell on Wheels gets wrong. Hell on Wheels doesn't purport to be historically correct, but does use elements of realism. Some have noted the show is too modern in its presentation of prejudice, with interracial language and interaction between Bohannon and Elam Ferguson, a former slave played by Common that appears more 1960s than 1860s. 
Critics have said the encampments on Hell on Wheels have narrow streets, unrealistic for the time, when freight was moved by horse and wagon, and these large teams needed space to manoeuvre. The town was set up in a grid, so you should have been able to see open prairie at both ends of downtown. Actors, Anson Mount, Colm Meany, Phil Burke, Christopher Hayadol, Jennifer Ferrin. Premiered November 6, 2011. I might just fly my ass out of here. The Sun, What the Sun Gets Right, with a cast headed by Pierce Brosnan, The Sun spans decades, reliving the life of Eli McCullough, from his youth to adulthood. As the story unfolds, viewers watch McCullough's story while meeting members of the Comanche Nation and the Garcia family in an accurate representation of cross-cultural interaction and conflict in the American West. McCullough's family was taken out by Native Americans and he was kidnapped as a boy. In contrast to typical presentations of frontier volatility, settlement and encroachment, sit center stage. When you meet the Texas Rangers, the Buffalo Hunters, who are destroying the Comanche food chain, you meet the Tonkawa tribe, the longtime enemy of the Comanche. You realize, oh, it's not that the Comanche were so awful, it's that world of the Texas North Plains is so terrible that this is the only way to survive, by being tough and draconian. The Sun had Native American consultants and cast to stay true to history. The author of the book upon which the series was based, Philip Meyer, drank buffalo blood, studied the Comanche language, and went to wilderness survival training to understand what his characters would have to endure. What the Sun gets wrong the Sun is selective in what it shows in terms of Native American tribes in the American West, a conscious decision. Though it's historically accurate that captives were taken advantage of, that's what happened. In choosing what we selected from all the different ways we could show the Comanche lifestyle, we knew we were leaning too heavily on the aggression on women. We're just trying to be careful. We've had a lot of conversations about where our line should be. Actors, Pierce Brosnan, Jacob Loftlin, Sidney Lucas, David Wilson Barnes, Jess Wexler, premiered April 8, 2017. Godless, what Godless gets right. Godless revolves around La Belle, New Mexico, a mining community where most of the men are gone and women take over leadership as a result. La Belle represents a collection of ghost towns researched by the show's creator, Scott Frank. Settlements that were abandoned when they became uninhabitable due to the lack of resources or manpower. The women of La Belle assert their authority, demonstrative of some of the rights afforded to some women in the West that their counterparts in the East didn't have. Actress Audrey Moore found this to be one of the most appealing aspects of the show, a chance to show that women were simply knitting and sweeping while they wished for independence is just plain wrong. Women were shooting, making whiskey, running businesses, and keeping their families alive. It wasn't a novelty. It was the identity of the Western woman. She was fierce, brave, and strong. The show reflects a vulnerability to life in the American West, where outlaws could ride into town at any time. A truism represented by the bitter rivalry between Frank Griffin, Jeff Daniels, and Roy Good, Jack O'Connell. What Godless gets wrong, Frank, admittedly, really worked hard to embrace all of the old cliches. He wanted to have the breaking of the wild horse, the two guys facing each other in a gunfight, the train robbery, all the things that you're used to seeing in a western. This may not spell accuracy, but, in his opinion, makes the show appropriate to the genre. It also makes for entertaining television. Actors, Jeff Daniels, Michelle Dockery, Jack O'Connell, Kim Coates, Keith Jardine, premiered November 22, 2017. Bonanza. What Bonanza gets right? Ben Cartwright, Lorne Green, and his sons, Adam, Pernell Roberts, Eric, Dan Blocker, and Joseph, Michael Landon, on the Ponderosa Ranch in northern Nevada for 14 seasons, created by David Detort. Bonanza offered a sense of realism with everything ranging from family to saloon culture. Because Detort was dedicated to historical authenticity in his productions, Bonanza dealt with issues relevant to the time period, such as animal poaching and prospecting, with heart and compassion. What Bonanza gets wrong? 
The warmth that dominated the relationship among the Cartwright family wasn't inaccurate, per se, but it was emphasised due to the demands of actor Lorn Green. Bonanza also integrated comedy and romance to add to the show's appeal and tackle 20th century issues as much as those relevant to the 19th century. The show was not gritty or accurate enough in terms of hardship, always concluded with a happy ending achieved by one of the Cartwrights. Heavy on stereotypes and lacking in diversity, Bonanza offered a blend of adventure entertainment and family programming. Actors, Lorne Green, Michael Landon, Dan Blocker, Pernell Roberts, Victor Senyong, premiered September 12, 1959. Maverick, What Maverick Gets Right, a show that originally starred James Garner in the role of Brett Maverick, aired from 1957 to 1962. A card shark, Maverick was accompanied by his brother, Bart, Jack Kelly, and cousin, Bo Maverick, Roger Moore. Travelling the American West, as the show progressed, Garner and Kelly took turns heading the episodes. The depiction of card players was purported to be realistic in atmosphere, incorporating footage of railroads to give the show a Western feel. What Maverick Gets Wrong Maverick was funnier than most other shows in the genre. Brett and Bart Maverick were both charming, something that allowed them to talk their way out of any and all trouble they came upon. Even star James Garner called Maverick a reluctant hero with a conscience, a very idealised look at the Wild West. Actors James Garner, Jack Kelly, Diane Brewster, Roger Moore, Robert Colbert. Premiered September 22, 1957. I'll give you a hand. The Virginian. What the Virginian gets right. Drawing from Owen Wister's 1902 novel, The Virginian, Horseman of the Plains, The Virginian started as an extension of the show, Decision, airing from 1962 to 1971. The Virginian was among the many popular westerns during the decade, following the story of the four men at the Shiloh Ranch, aptly called The Virginian. The show featured a host of supporting and guest actors, creating a sense of the itinerant and ever-changing lifestyle of many in the American frontier. What the Virginian gets wrong. The Virginian, much like the book to which it is linked, the first cowboy western, perpetuates an idealised notion of the American West with its strong, morally sound, yet mysterious hero. By including a variety of strong, complex characters, the show received great praise, but it also meant that there was constant change, everything from costumes to cast, and meant there was a lot of inconsistency. Even Randy Boone, one of the actors on the show, thought the costumes could use more realism. The belts they wore didn't tie down. They were examples of the highest belt technology of the time. They were stiff and made so that you could draw real easy. They just weren't authentic. Actors, James Drury, Doug McClure, Lee Majors, Stuart Granger, John McLean. Premiered September 8, 1970. Deadwood, what Deadwood gets right, Deadwood series and follow-up movie has historical figures among its characters. Figures like Wyatt Earp, Calamity Jane and Wild Bill Hickok weave their way throughout the series as do lesser known but no less real men and women like Alma Garrett, Soul Star and E.B. Farnham. The show also provides realism to the flood of immigrant workers who were present in the American West, specifically hundreds of Chinese workers who lived in the Badlands part of town. What Deadwood gets wrong? The true Deadwood residents don't always match their on-screen counterparts, and often their representation is a mix of fact and fiction. Seth Bullock, Timothy Oliphant, and Soul Star opened a store in Deadwood. The former never married his brother's widow. The blend of truth and hyperbole also manifests in the poetic cursing for which the show is known. This language would have been fairly foul in Deadwood, but profanity in 1879 was different from the curse words that effortlessly come to Al Swearinger, Ian McShane. That said, the rampant F-words are intentionally used to drive home the harshness of the era to viewers desensitised to words like crap and damn. Actors, Timothy Oliphant, Ian McShane, Molly Parker, Powers Booth, Jim Beaver. Premiered March 21, 2004. 
I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think in the comments. I appreciate your likes and subscribers. Hit the notification button to get my new videos. Take a look at my channel and check my Facebook page. The links are in the description. I am Wrangler. Bye for now. See you again soon. I got the self-same. Interesting facts about famous people.